Well, hey, book lovers, welcome back to another episode of Young Adult Edition. We are so excited to see you because we have one of our favorite topics we are chatting about today. We're talking all about building steampunk, how to create a steampunk world in YA literature here on Young Adult Edition. We're going to be hanging out with a fantastic guest author today, and we've got all sorts of fun, fabulous things for you as we're chatting about book world news and there's some major stuff going on, new releases, and all of the fun here on Young Adult Edition. Today, I'm your host, K.M. Robinson, author of Lion's Lamps. I'm joined by the fabulous Amber R. Duell, author of Dreamkeeper, and L. Beaumont, author of Game of Physique. Ladies, how you doing today? Good, tired, but good. <laughs> it's been a morning. <laughs> <laughs> It's always been a morning around here. Welcome to Mondays. Guys, let us know. How is your Monday morning going? What do we need to know about your Mondays today? All right. We are talking all about steampunk today. Elle is more dressed up than the rest of us because Elle's cooler. But we all have our steampunk jewelry on. We're really excited for today. Let us know, guys. Do you have steampunk jewelry? We want to hear where you got it from because we're probably going to go buy it too. Just saying. <laughs> Um, so guys, we've got a lot going on. We're going to jump right in because we do have a lot to chat about today. Um, what do we have for book world news, Al? So we just found out that Amazon is going to be launching a Wheel of Time series. And I was looking at the cast this morning and I approve. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I approve. So if you want to check that out, Google it. Um, the cast looks amazing. <laughs> it does. I haven't seen it yet, but I, I clearly need to go check this out. But I'm really excited for this. Um, not only that, but uh, I'm going to branch off just because it is a steampunk episode and Caraval Row is going to be coming out on Amazon Prime. Um, I'm excited for that. August 30th. So shout out to a steampunk um, kind of show with fairies. <laughs> Amber, have you seen the commercials for that yet? Yes. Are you it's so excited? Orlando Bloom, right? Yes. Yeah. That one? Yes. <laughs> Guys, have you seen the commercials? Let us know just how excited you are for this because I'm very excited. Yes, I am so excited. So those are my two uh, book, book world news slash steampunk news. <laughs> Perfect. And Amber, I know you've got some book world news for us as well. Yes. NBC Universal has ordered the pilot of One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Um, so that's going to be exciting. Hopefully, you know, they uh, do a good job with the pilot and it gets a whole series. So guys, let us know your thoughts. We would love to hear from you. Are you excited for all of these amazing book world news shows coming out? Let us know down in the comments below. If you are on our replay, we would love to hear from you as well. Go ahead and drop your thoughts. And we'll be monitoring those comments over the next couple of days and weeks, and we'll make sure we get those answered for you. So drop us a line, let us know how are you feeling about these. And speaking of things that we want to know how you feel about, we need to talk about some new releases that are coming out this week. So if you are a book lover and you have a book that you are just so excited for that's coming out this week or in the coming weeks, let us know so we can make sure we include it in our weekly shout outs. And if you're an author who has a book coming out, you know you better be getting on those DMs right now and letting us know when your book is coming out so we can add it to the lineup as well. And let's take a look at these fantastic new releases coming out this week. Every single week, our new releases are powered by at the QD Bibliophile over on Instagram. The Quick and Dirty Bibliophile is on Facebook and Instagram. And every single week, she puts out new releases from young adult, new adult, and paranormal romance. So if you want the latest and greatest in books coming out every single week, hop on over to at the QD Bibliophile on Instagram and Facebook and give her a shout out and let her know Young Adult Edition sent you and tell us which of these books are you most excited about this week? I've been taking a look at these and I'm noticing a ton of Academy books out this week. Are you a fan of Academy books? Let us know. Let us know which cover you love the most and which one you're the most excited for it to come out this week as we get into our conversation all about creating steampunk in YA literature. Now, we are jumping in. We're going to have a great conversation. We've got a fantastic guest star we're going to be bringing on in just a minute, but we did want to do a little quick shout out because we can and it's our show and it's fun. Uh, some of us 
have our own steampunk books. So we're going to give those a shout out real fast. Uh, L, Game of Bazique, tell us a little bit about it. Game of Bazique uh, takes place in Paris in like the 1800s and it's a steampunk circus and it's an original, not a retelling. Um, it follows Etienne who is a fae and at the time um, fae are being uh, um, hunted and everything. So he's in hiding and he's a con man trying to con the wrong person who ends up being Baron Weaver who runs the circus and he gets enlisted into that to uh, pay him back and his life is turned upside down in a good and a bad way. So it's fun. <laughs> Fantastic. And quick shout out for me. I do have an Aladdin retelling with very strong steampunk influences. Um, it's it's basically steampunk Aladdin. That's, that's all I need to say about this book. They steal an airship. It's not love at first sight, that's for sure. And it's rather on the deadly side, especially with a genie who has an agenda of his own. So Steampunk Aladdin, we're gonna be chatting all about both of these books today as we bring on our fantastic guest star. Uh, her name is Dana Frederick, and she is the author of Out of the Shadows. Dana, how are you? Good morning, how are y'all? I'm great. We're so excited to see you here, loving your look today. Thank you very much. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta have the aesthetic going and everything with Steampunk, there's a very strong aesthetic. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna be chatting all about that today as we talk about world building in the steampunk genre. Uh, but before we jump in, Dana, tell us like the 10 second overview of your book. So my book is Out of the Shadows and in Out of the Shadows, um, Lenore, she is on the run from the law because she's a thief and she thinks she finds safety with this wealthy but eccentric family only to realize that they are hiding some pretty big secrets and that's kind of everyone's jam in this series. Everyone's hiding stuff so you get to figure all those secrets out. Um, and of course, someone who knows her real identity is chasing after her. Fantastic. So we are jumping in today. We're going to talk all about Out of the Shadows. We're going to talk about Lions and Lamps. We're going to talk about Game of Physique. Uh, and we are going to answer all of your questions. Melanie's here hanging out with us. Good morning, girl. We're excited to see you. If you are joining us live, go ahead and jump down into those comments and let us know what we should be talking about when it comes to the world of steampunk. We want to hear from you. And if you're on our rebroadcast, we want to hear from you as well. And bonus... We have a little bit of an extra for you today. If you are so incredibly thrilled about steampunk books, Dana's actually giving away a copy of her book. The more you comment and interact with us over the next week here on this video, the more likely you are to win a copy. We're excited about it. So let's dive in. We're gonna ask our questions today. If you've got questions for any of us, but especially Dana, go ahead and let us know in those comments below and we'll get as many answers while we're live on air as possible. So the first thing we're gonna chat about, ooh, as I as I switch things on my screen, is what kind of elements go into creating a steampunk world? So Danny, you wanna weigh in on this first? Yeah, definitely. Um, and this is, this is one of my favorite questions. Um, like romance, like paranormal, like the answer is kind of in the name. So in steampunk, you have to have those steam elements. And in this case, the steam refers to like the level of technology you're dealing with. So think steam <laughs> engines, that level of technology. Um, Not steam as in romance, although we love that too. Right. <laughs> you can have steam steampunk. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you're going to have like that steam train level of technology. I always kind of define it as like light sci-fi. You're not gonna have like spaceships in space or anything like that, but you know, you will have some artistic license taken with like, you know, the 1800s Queen Victoria era technology, which is mostly steam. And of course you have like a lot to play with because you've got the industrial revolution during that time, huge changes happening in the world. It's really fun. Fantastic. Elle, how do you feel about this? I agree with that. Um, you know, like you have to, um, you can have fun with it. You can be creative. Um, like the, the whole industrial, getting the gears in place. You can be creative with that, but you have to go with the technology that they had. You can be creative and create these incredible things. Um, for example, I have Aerialist and Game of Bazique, and one of their tools that they use is a crane, but it's all gears and they had pulley systems it's not something that has like a hydraulic system that we have today. Um, it had all gears in it and like very simple pulley systems and stuff that they would have had available to them in the 1800s. So I agree with Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Amber, you wanna weigh in? Um, they said it basically. <laughs> 
Well, for me, I think um, as far as elements go, just to add on to that a little bit, I think the fashion is also really important within the world of steampunk. So having those steam related elements and specifically the technology, you also have to add in some of that fashion flair. We have all the fabulous Victorian looks. Um, and we're going to be chatting about that in a little bit. But guys, let us know in the comments, how do you feel about steam technology? And how much do you know about it? And how much of it do you like to see in your steampunk books? Let us know. All right. Uh, so we are going to be um, answering your questions. If you've got questions, now is the time to get those in. We would love to hear from you. Um, and we were getting as many answered as possible while we jump on to today's Episodes, let us know. What do we need to talk about? L? I'm sorry, what was that? You just cut out. <laughs> <laughs> your turn to ask your question. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. I was pulling up my document off to the side. So it's <laughs> just, okay, just landed just... on the technology. It's always the technology's fault. You know, sometimes <laughs> it, you know, if I had like a manuscript, the old typewriter and everything, I'd be okay. You know, sometimes, oh, exactly. sometimes well, high tech is a curse. <laughs> it, was, it was my fault too. I did a really awkward lead in because I went to get up your question and I'm like, oh, I've got a button here for questions. Let me just keep talking about questions. It's, <laughs> it's like prolonged that. It's, it's Monday. Happy it Monday. Oh, right. God. Struggle is real. <laughs> it is. So Tina, how much, re uh, how much research goes into creating a steep pump? world to keep it believable like we were just kind of talking about like what elements to put in there but how much research did you do in your story i i do a, a good bit of research um but i sort of do selective research i also have the advantage of my dad's an engineer so i will call him up and be like hey dad like and I, the, one of the things is that you have to decide to with your steampunk novel is one are you going to try to keep it within the realm of like reality and two what time frame ish do you want to focus on so the queen victoria reigned for a really long time so the victorian era is vast i think it was she reigned for what like 70 something years something like that yeah. is a long time so um i generally keep my technology around the 1880s and not past that um the 1880s was like kind of the height of the victorian era so i like a lot of the things that are available then um so that'll really help you to know like what kind of what's the pinpoint era that you want to focus on um so for me like i will um excuse me so one of my characters for instance she's a doctor so i'll look up medical technology that was around in the 1880s um one of my characters is an engineer lenore our main character she loves machines um so i look at the just general te technological advances of that time frame and like i said i'll call my dad and i'll ask him how does this work um so there's a, I've got a new book coming out there, not as a spoiler alert, but just a little tease. Um, I, I called my dad and I said, hey, dad, I need to talk to you about how magnets work. Can you explain it to me? Like I'm a five-year-old because that's my level of understanding. Um, and then the magnets come into play in the book. Um, and so, you know, he will go through and he'll explain it to me very patiently. Um, and so, like I said, I will do a lot of that sort of research. I'll talk to my dad a lot because he's super smart when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it just kind of depends on like what your focus is. Absolutely, that's a, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Cam, do you have anything to say on that? Um, I definitely did a lot of research and with my particular story, I did a lot of like historical references because my hometown is actually the site of the first train in the Western hemisphere. So oh, cool. I, yeah, I put a lot of my, <laughs> I put a lot of my hometown's history into that and I made a lot of references into it. So I did definitely research some of the technology, but I did a lot more on the historical side for mine because mine is, uh, tends to lean a not quite to the fantasy side. It's it's not fantasy. It's not. It's sci-fi. But <laughs> but it's a little less rooted in the technology as opposed to um, how what they're doing with the technology. So it's it's a little less of a focus on how it's working and just that they have access to it and that they're implementing it into their strategy to steal an airship. So mm -hmm. and I get all that fun historical stuff in there as well. What about you? Um, I it depends on what I'm going into like there are some elements like in mine i set it in paris so i actually had to research paris in some streets because i kept it very like realistic like historical in that aspect 
so I researched areas and the technology of the areas and like the structures and everything. So with that kind of stuff, I did do a lot of research. And then also I did look into like what kind of pulley systems they had at, at the time and like what kind of gear, like that kind of stuff. I did do my research and also clothing. I know we're gonna be getting into that too, but um, what was Paris's style versus England, because in the book they do travel, it's a traveling air circus. Um, so it was like, what was acceptable in that area might not have been acceptable in another area. So it was like, I did have to research the difference in styles too in, in that way, so. That's awesome. Uh, we do have some fan questions coming in. Mel is saying, I admit I haven't read a steampunk yet, but I've got yours on my TBR and I'm still working on it. And she would like to know, Dana, what was your first introduction to steampunk? Ooh, that's a fun question. Thank you so much, Melanie. Um, so my first introduction to steampunk is actually one of these books behind me, um, the Ketty J series. So the Ketty J series is, it's actually a little more diesel punk than steampunk, but it still has its roots in steampunk. Um, and it's very much like this ragtag band of misfits. Um, they go on a caper, caper goes wrong, of course. Hijinks ensue. Um, I really, it's by Chris Wooding and it's really, really good. It is gritty though. Um, it's a little more adult. It's not really YA. Um, so if you're looking for something specifically YA, um, I would also recommend um, Courtesies and, cur sorry, Curtsies and Conspiracies by Gail Carriger, who is my, one of my top favorite authors. She's amazing. It is YA um, and it's got all of those fun steampunk elements in it. I have it. Hey, nice. There you I go. Knew, I knew I had it somewhere. Yeah. I just redid part of my shelves yesterday. I'm like, if you're somewhere, I don't know. Yes. Oh, I love her so much. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Elle, what was your introduction to steampunk? I don't actually remember. I think it was probably a movie. Um, Cause like never ending story has like these steampunk kind of things with like the, the elements that are in it. Um, and then I don't remember the first book that I read. I just remember going, oh my goodness, I love this idea of this clash because I've always been like a huge um, like medieval fantasy. And then from medieval fantasy, I went to like the Victorian. And when I discovered like how fascinating steampunk was, I wrote it before I knew what it was like. You know, and that's where I was like, I need to find somebody that writes this. So I was like, what even is this? And I found out it was steampunk. And that's where I like, I just went on this Amazon search and pulled up so many different authors. Like, um, what was one? Um, I can't think of it. It's on my bookshelf downstairs. I have like an entire shelf of steampunk books down there. So, and, and Gail actually was one of those that I read with my friend. Um, Stardust has those elements and Stardust is also like heavily, I know you- <laughs> I've got mine over there too. <laughs> it's very fantastical with like light elements of steampunk in it. it, it it's a beautiful blend. Um, so there, you know, like there are so many different books out there and there is, if you, want to if you're into fantasy and want to tread lightly like there's so many different ways that steampunk can go heavy steampunk heavy tech or just like having fun with it like you know like i didn't i personally didn't get too techy um because it was supposed to be like light and you know an easy read so that was my long breath answer there. <laughs> <laughs> Amber, how about you? um i actually don't no, this is considered steampunk. But what got me interested in steampunk was Return to Oz. Oh, I remember that. It was like right? a mini series. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's considered steampunk, but I just remember it kind of had like that vibe to me, like as a little kid. And so, you know, I went from there searching out into uh, <laughs> the world like Elle did. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Dana, what were you going to say? Sorry, I, I apologize for interrupting. Um, so that's one of the things that you kind of have to figure out with when you write steampunk is how technical do you want to get? So like my dad being an engineer, he reads all my stuff and he's like a huge fan of mine and I really appreciate his support. He um, wants like all the technical details and whatnot. Um, some people, not so much. And so like as an author, you kind of have to figure out 
like how technical are you going to get? Um, I feel like I'm personally in a really good place because again, I have like a five-year-old's understanding of like the technological aspects. So I feel like I can usually translate after my dad takes two hours to explain it to me because again, lack of understanding. Um, I feel like I can translate it into a way that's much more um, broad and easy to understand. So yeah, and like like you were saying, L, like your focus is less on the the technical side because you want it to be a little lighter and whatnot. Yeah, and those are all like really good considerations. Fantastic. Um, I think for me, for my introduction to steampunk, I was introduced mostly through Pinterest because <laughs> Pinterest is a big thing where we all hang out in the steampunk yeah. world. Um, and then when I was on vacation many years ago, there was this lovely woman who dressed up as like a steampunk angel and stood out for tips on a in a harbor. And it was just the most amazing thing. And I was hooked at that point. Her costume was amazing. Uh, and then I started really getting into it on Pinterest and like looking these things up. And uh, I think the first steampunk book I read was actually by my friend Sherry Ficklin. Uh, she did a co-authored series with Tyler Jolie, and it was The Lost Imperials, which is basically uh, Anastasia and her brother were actually saved and time traveled and steampunked. And it, you kind of go through this alternate version of history in a very steampunky way. So all the fun with that one as well. Not always in the comments saying, yes, Pinterest. Yes, we love Pinterest. Pinterest is the absolute best. And uh, And worst. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Also true. It will eat your life, but in a, in a really fun way. It will. Yes. All right. Um, All right. Let me see if I can get this up here. Here you go, Amber. What types of characteristics are important to include in a steampunk story? Did we do this one? I feel like we asked it in a different way and it was okay. already answered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I have to apologize, guys. My live broadcasting platform has given us a new interface, and the new interface is being super glitchy right now. And it's actually moving my words around, and I'm and I messed up a little bit. My bad. Let's see. She can do my question. We're just. I don't even know which question we're at at this point. Take take this one, Amber. Do this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What steampunk world would you want to be transported into? This is a really good question. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and I, you know what? I've had a question like this before and I'm always torn. So I'm torn either between um, Gail Carragher's Parasol Verse, um, which is the the more adult one. Um, Alexia Terabati is her main character in that. And that girl loves to eat. Like we could go to all the good eateries and I could hang out with her. But also there is a series um, called A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan also steampunk and there are dragons so i haven't seen any dragons in gail Carragher's universe yet so i'm gonna have to go with uh, marie brennan's universe in a natural history of dragons because who doesn't love dragons <laughs> right so true right. <laughs> so uh, you guys I'm trying to think i think i would want to be transported and this is one of the books that i actually have on my shelf that um I should have said before. The Kiss of Steel by um, Beck McCaster. I think I would want to be transported into that world. It's gritty. Um, and I don't know, it just, it's supernatural and it's gritty and it's really realistic feeling um, with supernatural elements into it. Um, but I think I'd want to be transported into that world because I know I'd be protected too. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Amber, how about you? <laughs> I don't know, but that dragon one sounds pretty cool because steampunk plus dragons. Yes, it is. It's amazing. I love the series so much. And one of my goals for 2019, getting slightly off topic, is to like finish out a bunch of the series I've started. And so I think I've got one or two books left in that. So maybe that means needs to be my next read. Awesome. Fantastic. That's a great idea. Um, I think for me... Um, I would I would actually probably want to check out the one that I mentioned, the Lost Imperial series, because it involves time travel and steampunk and glorious costumes. So I'm, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> I'm yes. there. Uh, and speaking of which, let's talk about steampunk fashion. So Dana, weigh in. What do we need to know? Okay. So the 
1800s went through a huge arc as far as fashion goes. We had corsets, we had bustles, we had um, big skirts, we had little skirts, we had like huge sleeve shoulder things, all kinds of stuff. Um, so there's a lot of options. And of course, corsets. Corsets were like the big thing. Um, so you have a lot of options. Um, I have a, um, I've shared something on my Patreon recently where I share like my pinspiration. Um, and I had basically dresses through the 1800s. Um, and basically like you can get really fun with this. You can, you can get real fancy. Um, so yeah, like all of these, all of these elements can go into your world. And it can also be a thing that allows you to discuss issues. Like for instance, with sexism, because sexism is very, very real. Um, and is like, was a big thing in, that time period, women didn't have the right to vote yet. Um, you know, they it was considered improper for women to dress certain ways, but there were ways around it too, which is really fun. Swimming costumes were a way around it. Um, bicycling costumes were basically like ladies had these like enormous um, trousers, which were which are honestly just really funny looking. Um, was a way around it. So yeah, you have so many fun options. Oh, and the fascinators. Wait, wrong side. So you had a uh, you had fascinators as well. I think I'm doing the right side. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Oh, wait, there it is. <laughs> so yeah, it's it switched. The camera switched. So I, like I keep getting confused. But yeah, you had fascinators too, which are always so much fun. I know. I, oh, for sure. sure. I'm such a big fan of fascinators. Mm -hmm. I have my fascinator. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yes, I have my fascinator. You guys, basically, Woo. this is just a big steam party. <laughs> it is. It is. We love it. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you are joining us live or on the rebroadcast. Have you ever dressed up in steampunk attire? We want to hear all about it. Bonus points for sending us pictures. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so let's keep chatting about the fashion. We know that they've got this wide range of outfits that you could be using and so many things we can write into our stories. And we all know that we love to dress up in steampunk. Uh, Elle, tell me a little bit about your fashion when it comes to steampunk. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm going to answer your question that you shouted out. You know that I just recently put on my steampunk attire and my elf ears for um, a photo shoot I just did for um, Game of Physique. I was... <laughs> I, you know I'm pulling it up. <laughs> <laughs> I um, wore trousers, my little bloomers. They're they're not actual steampunk, but they totally worked as they were cargo pants. They totally worked as bloomers. So um, I did just post for that. Um, and in my book, it what it's not acceptable for women to wear trousers. It's really not. Um, and in there, I made a reference to it not being acceptable, but my leading lady, she did wear them because she's like, it's way more clothing than what I wear in the circus. Because in the circus, they wear, you know, in, up in the air, they're in uh, skin tight clothing, not acceptable. And it's worldly and everything. And you know, like risque and it's acceptable there, but not outside of the grounds. Um, Cause it's largely just an adult show, kind of like a Cirque du Soleil type thing. Um, but yeah, I had so much fun with the clothing, um, the corsets, the, the, I didn't go into like bustles or anything, but I did like the bunched up skirts and um, like all of the metal gear and the boots. And it, I just had so much fun with it. And you can really get creative because as Dana said, it went through such a change. Um, oh no, she's pulling up the... <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I need to follow you on Instagram. <laughs> there is my, I have my lace um, gloves on. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, my goggles, my ears, and my bloomers, my cargo pants to act as my bloomers. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, because we have all the fun when it comes to Young Adult Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. My uh, my steampunk attire is like way down in my Instagram feed. So sorry, guys. We're not scrolling that far. <laughs> look it up. You can totally look that up. Um, so yeah, there's so much that goes into steampunk fashion. Amber, if you were forced to wear one and only one steampunk trend, which would it be? Well, I used to volunteer at a Revolutionary War fort and I had to wear the corsets. 
So I would go with corsets. Nice. Yes. I love it. Elle, which one would you choose? Uh, not the corset. Not the corset. <laughs> <laughs> the skirt. The skirts. Because there's so much that you can do with the skirts. You can put pants on under them, tights, whatever you want to do. I'd go with the skirt. <laughs> there we go. Dana. Um, I love a fascinator. I think you can do use a fascinator at any event. Going out to dinner, little fascinator. You can go to like a big event, big fascinator. Girl, why aren't we best friends? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as soon as as soon as we're over, I'm gonna make sure I'm following all of you guys on all the channels, and then I'm probably gonna bother you. So apologies now. <laughs> we like <laughs> it. Though. Yeah, that's, we like that's it. Part of all of this, I'm just saying, we're all gonna be friends, and then when we hang out at PenCon, <laughs> which we're gonna talk about in just a minute, guys, we're gonna have all the fun. I'm just saying. Yeah. Wait, wait till we get behind the scenes after this episode, Dana, because I got some mm -hmm. stuff for you. It's oh, gonna sweet. Be fun. Oh yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, so we got everybody answered on that one. Just double checking on that. Um, <laughs> for me, I don't know. It's such a hard choice because everybody said really good things. Like I adore the skirts. I adore the corsets. I adore the fascinators. Now it's really really hard. But in go effort, for the boots. Go for the boots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be an entire outfit together, like <laughs> right. <laughs> Four of us, it's gonna be awesome. Yes, no, I'm such a big fan of steampunk fashion. Like, you guys know, I'm a photographer in my other life, and I have a whole closet full of steampunk things that I pull out for my models to wear. It's amazing, it's so much fun. But, uh, in an effort to kind of shout out some steampunk fashion because I can, and because we're doing shameless PenCon plugs today, I do want to let you guys know. Um, that there will be some fancy artwork that I am sharing for PenCon. And these are my my Aladdin characters, my Aladdin and my princess in their steampunk attire. I'm just saying my fabulous artist created this and you can get your own version of this at PenCon 2019 coming up really soon. So we're super excited about that. Um, but before we get into our discussion on PenCon, we do have a fun little game to play. So Amber, take it away. Time for this or that. <laughs> Steampunk <laughs> style. <laughs> All right, I have four of them this time. Okay. First one, you'll start with Dana. Okay. Do you prefer steam engines or airships? Ooh. Okay. I'm going to say engines because flying freaks me out. As cool as I think an airship would be, I'm worried anytime I get on a plane, I'm going to die. So I'm going to have to go with, um, with steam engines. <laughs> good choice. Good choice. Mm -hmm. Katie or Cam? <laughs> We always do it. I know. <laughs> Dana's reaction, though, that was great. <laughs> okay. um, that's a really mean question for me because, as I mentioned, my characters actually steal a steamship inside of Lions and Lamps, but it's based on a real life steam engine. Uh, it was actually the first steam engine in the Western Hemisphere. And so, asking me this question is like, do I side with my book or do I side with my history? I don't, I don't know. It's a problem. So probably, ugh, I I like flight. I do. I'm going with the steam ship, the airship, the airship. L, airship. Oh, that would be me. Yeah, no. You know, I I love um, engines. Like I love trains and all that. But the um, airship in my story is really cool. You know that that it's centered around the airship and it's really cool because I went like full out steampunk with that. <laughs> See, I just like flying. Like if I could have a superpower, it would be flight. Well, <laughs> one of them would be flight. And so like, give me the airships. Give, let me fly over people. I don't have to like turn around things. Like we're good. Just let me fly. I like it. <laughs> what else you got, Amber? Okay. If you could pick, would you pick a steampunk inspired by Victorian England? or more of a Wild West style? Hmm. Oh. I'm gonna have to go Victorian England just cause that's my jam. You guys can't see it, but I have a huge Union Jack um, flag right there. So oh. I'm gonna have to go England. <laughs> that's awesome. I think for me, I'm going uh, Victorian as well just because I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't have an explanation. I just love it. <laughs> yeah, that is a hard question because I didn't do I didn't do England. I did Paris. So like, I would go Wild West because there's so much that you can do. Like, 
the wild wild west like that movie i love that movie that was like one of those that kind of like put me in the steampunk like oh my gosh <laughs> the wild wild west yeah <laughs> i was gonna say like i feel like you're more on the wild west side yeah. and i really want to see you like right that in I know I'm like oh yeah. that would be really fun she, Amber she has a list you can't be adding ideas to this list yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I refresh my inbox to read that one <laughs> <laughs> okay the next one is goggles or top hats hmm. Amber you're mean yeah. <laughs> huh Well, I'll answer this one first because I got to yeah. know. I love them both. I own them both. I wear them both. They're in my photos. You guys have seen them like millions of times. I'm going to say top hat because the goggles never stay on my head the right way. I, I, they always like slide up and my hair looks like this and it's erect. So I love my goggles. But for the sake of my hair and my fashion, I'm going with the top hat. I think I'm going to have to go goggles, but it's a really, really tight race. Um you can do a lot with top hats, but I feel like goggles just sort of have that like spirit of adventure about them. And so like, I would, I would want to be prepared at all times for whatever. So I like that. I think I'm going to go with top hat. Um, I do love it. Uh, that's really hard. Cause I love my goggles obviously, but I think top hat um, just because the goggles don't stay on my head either. Really. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> and I'd probably end up honestly with them around my neck most of the time. I mean, that is the fun thing about them, but I just feel like the top hat finishes your look more. So it, it depends on what I feel like at the moment, but right now I'm feeling top hat. <laughs> of course, we can always cheat and say, well, we're going to put the goggles over the top hat. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I feel like that's probably the best answer. Best mm -hmm. of both worlds right there. I feel like the goggles scream steampunk more than like just a top hat. I agree. It's, a, it's a, True, I agree. But it's a matter of keeping it on my head. <laughs> yeah. And headaches. So. <laughs> that too. That too. Although yeah. my top hat is like huge and heavy, so I, it might give me a headache anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's like a thin line between goggle straps being too tight and too loose, so they like flop around. Yes. Yep. 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 It's a struggle. Yep. It's struggle. Real, guys. People don't realize. <laughs> My final this or that is my favorite one. Would you rather have mechanical clothes or mechanical limbs? Okay, I'm going to answer this. So I have a character in Out of the Shadows and the rest of the series. Um, his name is Lowell. He has mechanical limbs. He is one of my favorite characters and he is delightful. Um, so I'm going to go with that. Nice. I like it. I would go with mechanical limbs. I feel like that would... That'd be really cool. And it makes sense if you were to lose the limit at that period um, that you can just get mechanical limbs and you can open up a, car uh, a can of uh, jars, no problem. They're like the <laughs> pickles, <laughs> damn, like who needs a man? <laughs> I love it. I actually have a character who has mechanical limbs in my story as well. He's a bad guy. But it's really, really functional for him. And as cool as that is, I kind of like my limbs. I would like to keep them. So I'm going with mechanical clothing because then I can swap it out. Like there you go. You know, if my if my corset does one thing and my boots do another thing, like I can do all sorts of things and just mix and match and whatever I need for that occasion while still keeping my hands intact. You're like go go KM whatever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or I like that parasol. Yeah, I like a, yes. that's a mechanical parasol. Yes. Just get some yeah. elbow length gloves and then it's kind of the same. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally. There you go. Yeah, I got this. I got this. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, if you have questions for this or that coming up in the future, please let us know. We would love to include you in the fun games and we want to hear from you too. Be sure to answer all those questions in the comments while you're hanging out with us as well. Uh, go back and watch them and answer those for us so that we can know you guys a little bit better as we are hanging out. Now, we're almost at the point where we're going to be chatting about PenCon 2019. But before we get there, Elle's got one more question for us. Dana, what is the best piece of advice for people wanting to create a steampunk story, whether it's their second one, 50th one, or first one? Hmm. 
Um, this kind of this kind of has two parts. Um, one is it's not just gears. In the infamous, or rather, the immortal words of Glenn Hetrick, you can't just slap gears on it and call it steampunk. They have to be functional. So think about the ways that your machinery or whatever it is that you have works in the world. Um, and then on that in that same vein, don't be afraid to explore. Again, this era, like the Victorian era, was just a huge time of discovery. People were inventing things. There was so much advancement. So don't be afraid to explore the possibilities of like, what if, you know, instead of um, Edison kind of winning that electricity race, what if Tesla won? Like that's a really, really big one. Um, probably one of the, the easier paths to explore, but yeah, there's, there's tons of stuff. And also do research on some of the people um, who were in the, in that era, because again, there are a lot of really cool people. I listened to a podcast called No Such Thing as a Fish, and they discussed the Victorian era a lot on that. It's basically just a podcast of fun, interesting facts. There were some really crazy people in that era who did some really nutty stuff. Um, for instance, there was a guy, I don't remember his name. His dad was a naturalist who was like friends with Darwin, all kinds of stuff. This guy could identify any animal by based on the taste of its urine, which is super gross, but like, he was super duper knowledgeable about that natural world that was being explored. So yeah, just don't be afraid to explore and get crazy. That's amazing. I love yeah. it. Also, Cam. that's really gross. I, yeah, yeah, I know. I, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that one. So yeah, Cam, did you have any words on that? Oh um, research, doing your research, which we've been talking about a lot today. Um, and I think, I, technology is very important to make sure that it actually works and it actually makes sense. But also, um, you know, some of the, some of the important parts of steampunk, like the fashion, make sure you are researching what actually would work. Some things, some things I think we take a lot of liberties on. So just be aware of what actually is kind of classified as steampunk as you're writing it into your stories as well. And then do your research on the technology as well. Yeah, I'll just weigh in on that. And I, I have to agree with what you lady said and just do your research, have fun with it, but don't go too crazy because what makes it believable is doing your research and making it realistic. And that that's the craft of a writer really is making it realistic, but also exploring the what ifs behind it. And that is my piece of advice. Watch, listen, research, you know, like just, and have fun. It, Cause it is fun. All right, we are moving on. Let's have our conversation about PennCon 2019. We're really excited for this because you will be able to see me and Amber and Dana at PennCon 2019. Uh, Dana, you've been there before, right? I have been, um, I went as an attendee last year. So this is my first year as, um, as a vendor. So tell us a little bit about your experience. What can we be expecting? Lots and lots of books, lots and lots of people, lots and lots of fun. Um, one of the things I really appreciated about PenCon, I, I do a lot of events. Um, I probably do, probably I, I probably do on average about two events a month. Um, so I've seen a lot. And PenCon, they make it fun. They make it interactive. There's like a dance party. There's trivia. There are um, lots of opportunities to meet and talk with your favorite authors. Um, so yeah, don't be afraid to jump in. Everyone is super duper nice. I know that can be really scary. Um, but yeah, like people, like book people love to talk about books and talk about reading and, and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, and there is a ton of activity. So be sure to like rest up before you go, bring snacks, all that kind of stuff. Cause it's full on awesomeness. That's so cool. Uh, Amber, do you have questions? Oh, uh, probably, but there's <laughs> such a big question mark that I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you have your, do you have your outfit ready for the eighties party, Dana? Um, I do not because I'm trying to, I'm always trying to be like kind of on brand. I know that sounds super corporate. I hate that. But I'm trying to incorporate the steampunk side with the 80s side. And I'm still tweaking that. I've got Ooh. a skirt, which works. Yeah. Um, it's that fluorescent color thing that's getting me. So yeah. 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 Bright colors. Very, very bright colors, very which cool. isn't necessarily something you see as much in steampunk. Exactly. There, There is kind of a color, ste uh, color scheme for steampunk. Yeah. yeah. 
It's it's much more subdued than the 80s. You have a lot of jewel tones. The 80s have a lot of like highlighter pink and highlighter yellow. That's a that's a nice way of explaining neon. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like fluorescent. It just makes it sound prettier, a little bit fancier. No, no, it's like construction worker orange. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Amber, how about you? Do you have your outfit ready? Um, I'm wearing my grandmother's mother of the bride dress that she wore to my mom's wedding in '88. So, yay! It's like a seafoam green. So that's fun. But I don't hate it. So, <laughs> yeah. how many ruffles it. does it have? Uh, no, not really. Really? No. It's mostly, it's got like lace up here, it's long mm -hmm. sleeve, with a bunch of lace, and then it's just like a satin thing, but it's kind of see-through, so I have to go find a slip, which good luck finding one of those today, but hey. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the body Doesn't suit. Doesn't at least paint. have like the big shoulders. No. I'm telling you, this dress, I'm like so excited because I was like, ooh, I hate the 80s. Yeah. And she's like, well, you could borrow this, and I was like, <laughs> well, that's quite cool. Yeah, I know. Because it was all about like the ruffly shoulders in the 80s. I'm like, right. mm, and shoulder pads. <laughs> oh, shoulder pads. <laughs> Please don't bring those back. <laughs> <laughs> I have figured out what I'm doing. I just haven't assembled it yet. Mm -hmm. I'm actually mm -hmm. making part of it. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Your skirt is cool, though. Right? Skirt you found. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm making that. Because like you're sewing I, it. Yes. Oh, uh, so cool. I found this, yeah, I found this really cool skirt on Amazon, but it's one of those like super cheap Chinese things that people are not reviewing very well. Mm -hmm. But the look of it is perfect. And because I make dresses for my photography clients, I can just do whatever. That's so amazing. I'm, right? It's so much fun. And so I'm uh, I'm going to buy some tool this week and I'm gonna sew up this skirt and then we'll find a top to go with it and I'll call it a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bright jewelry, that's what I'm going for. There you go. I used to have all this bright jewelry back in high school. I got to see if I can find any of it. <laughs> yeah. I have some of it, but like, whew, big earrings. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> all right. Um, do you have anything in terms of advice for people who are attending PenCon this year? Like, what did you learn last year that you can pass on to our people? Because we know we've got viewers here with us right now who will be hanging out with us at PenCon. So what do you got for them? Um, so if you have a budget for PenCon, like if you, if money is no object, that's awesome. And I wish I had your life. Um, but if you have a budget for PenCon the way most of us do, I recommend going around and talking to everyone first because there are so many amazing authors, so many amazing books on offer. But like, I recommend like kind of going around and doing a little bit of a search first and then circling back just so that you like, you can really think about what it is that you want to buy before you buy it. And of course, I'm shooting myself in the foot saying that because like everybody else, I want to make sales. But as readers, I want you all to like make the most informed decision and be as happy as possible. That is a brilliant thing. That's actually what I do when I go to like craft fairs and book events that I'm not involved in. Like check everything out first, then yep. make your decisions. Because otherwise you're going to be really sad when you buy all the books you want, mm -hmm. but then up on the one that you really, really want at right. the end. Mm -hmm. So great advice. Uh, we love hearing about that. Melanie's in the comments saying, yes, PenCon. She's excited. She will be joining us for PenCon. Can't wait to see you there, Mel. Um, but we are coming to the end of our show, so we do need to chat just a little bit more about your book. So, Dana, give us mm -hmm. the more in-depth look at Out of the Shadows. So, like I said, with Out of the Shadows, we have Lenore. She's on the run from the law. She's a thief. There is a lot of, you know, stuff that we've talked about with the fashion and the technology and whatnot, but there's also a lot of intrigue. Um, which is one of the things I love about my book and all the secrets, because everyone has a hidden agenda. Um, there are a lot of different characters. It's, a, it's like a big cast book. Um, and you've got a lot of different personalities that kind of clash and whatnot. Um, and slight sideline at PenCon as well. I also make candles based on my characters. So, oops, there we go. Ah, I can't get it. So Lenore, for instance, is um, lavender and vanilla. And Rook, who is a crime lord, he is leather and whiskey. I'm going to have all of those with me. Um, and it kind of increases that experience when you read the book and you can kind of get a feel for those characters' personalities through the um, through this, uh, experience of, of smelling that, those things. So, yeah, lots of intrigue, lots of secrets, lots of, um, shall we say, lying without lying, if that makes sense. 
Love it. Uh, and I don't know if you know this, Dana, but mm -hmm. Elle actually makes bookish candles too. So I have a feeling you guys are going to hang out a lot. Oh Those my gosh, that's awesome. awesome. I do. <laughs> I do. I make, I make candles for authors and I, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, why I'm tired. Really. That's why I'm tired today. I was at an event yesterday. <laughs> yeah. If you guys have not checked out our episode on Young Adult Edition about making bookish candles, make sure you check that out. That was forever and a day ago. So you're going to have to scroll back, but it is a great episode on how to work with candle makers if you're an author or a book lover to get mm -hmm. custom bookish candles. Just a shout out to past episodes. Um, and we are going to be at PenCon 2019. You're gonna get your hands on some fantastic candles and books and all sorts of bookish swag. So make sure you come check all of us out at PenCon. Our books are, our steampunky books are right here. <laughs> oh my boy, I don't know. <laughs> Down like, there. Really hard. That side. <laughs> it's, it's opposite of what it needs to be. And I just <laughs> for that. Ooh, come check us out at TenCon. It's going to be all go. of the fun. Amber's <laughs> got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all over it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so fun. It's been a fun episode, guys. And I do appreciate all of you bearing with us as we were working through some technical difficulties, as we were trying out some new things behind the scenes, which we didn't tell you about, but we were. Uh, we'll have that fixed up for next week. It's going to be all the fun. Uh, and we will be chatting with the uh, people who have some buttons in the wrong places. We'll be dealing with that this week. All the fun, all the fabulousness. Um, but before we say goodbye, Dana, where can everybody find you? So um, I'm pretty much on all the social media platforms. However, Instagram is my big one. I love the Bookstagram community. Um, I'm just Dana Frederick um, on Instagram. And do uh, check out the spelling of that because my last name, I tell people it is easy to pronounce and difficult to spell. Um, but you can find me on Instagram. Um, I do also have pages on Twitter, um, Facebook, and Tumblr. Um, Facebook is the only one that's different. It's Dana Frederick and all the others. Um, Words by Dana is the Facebook um, page name. Um, you can also find me at wordsbydana.com. That's my website. Um, you can see my new release, which is coming out October 1st on there. You can see um, basically information about all the books. Um, and also I do recommend you check out the PennCon fan page um, because, and also the PennCon website, because pre-orders are still open for my books if you are going to PennCon. So that is um, interesting. And also on my website, like I said, I do a lot of events. I will be at um, the uh, Han the, um, what is it called? Sorry, Big River Steampunk Festival in Hannibal, Missouri in two weeks. I'm going to, here in Nashville, I'm going to be at McKay's Books this Friday. I'll be at PenCon in a couple of weeks. So do check out my website for all the events as well if you want to come hang out in real life. Fantastic. Well, we cannot wait to hang out with you at PenCon. I think we're all going to be best friends. Like, yes. I just think <laughs> we're just going to have all the fun at PenCon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you feel this way, too. Yeah, We're this is what caffeine is for. We'll stay up all night, and then we'll do the event, and we'll just, like, live on caffeine. I love it. <laughs> I love it. This is the best. All right, guys. Behind the scenes at PenCon 2019, you're going to be seeing Dana a lot because we're going to be together all the time. I'm just saying, new best friends. <laughs> if you love today's episode, uh, make sure you bring your friends to the party. Let them know that we're having all the fun here. Have them watch the rewatch and let us know what you want to see in the coming weeks. Dana, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We appreciate you being here. We will see you at PenCon soon. Yes, thank you so much for having me. All right, bye-bye. And if you guys are excited for more PenCon goodness, we have one more incredible episode before PenCon 2019. Next week, we're talking about how to pick the right retelling, researching for your writing. We are gonna be talking about how to do your research for your retellings. And we've got all of the retelling goodness, not just from your fabulous co-hosts here that we've all written our retellings, but we've got some incredible guests next week too. Some that you already know who are dear friends of ours here at Young Adult Edition and some brand new to us. Uh, authors will be joining us next week for our final pre penned con episode. So make sure you stay tuned. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard, 7 a.m. Pacific, right here on Facebook.com slash KM Robinson Books. And if you have an author that you would love to see on the show, go ahead and tag them right now in the comments and let us know why. We need to know why you want this person on air, but they also need to know why you're tagging them. So please don't just tag them. Make sure you're letting us know why you want to see them on air. Um, so that we can reach out to them and try to get as many of these fabulous people on air as possible. You guys know last week we hung out with Disney animator Philo Barnhart and heard all of the behind the scenes of Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, and all those fantastic movies that he works on. We're getting more celebrity interviews uh, in the next couple of months. I cannot wait to break those down for you. 
And we're also going to be having some of our celebrity author uh, friends back on air soon. So stay tuned because I've got big secrets coming and it's going to be awesome. But let us know who do you want to see on air. Uh, ladies, thanks so much for hanging out. Again, you guys are the best co hosts. I'll tell everybody where you can find them. They can find you. <laughs> you can always find me at elbowmontbooks.com. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, which is Elbowmont Books. And you can find me on Twitter, which is Elbowmont. And you can also find me on YouTube for um, unboxings and behind the scenes at Elbowmont. Amber, where can everybody find you? My website is amberrduel.com. I'm on Twitter, Amber R underscore dual, um, Instagram at Amber R Duel, and Facebook, Amber R Duel Author. And, of course, you can come hang out with me, K.M. Robinson, at kmrobinsonbooks.com and at K.M. Robinson Books on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, IGTV, YouTube, and all of those fun, fabulous platforms. Speaking of which, I got some bonuses for you guys. Are you ready for this? Last week, we announced that we were doing a special, or I was doing a special uh, training for you guys. I'm leaving it open an extra week for you, so if you guys are excited about creating your own talk show just like ours to interview celebrity authors and celebrities in general. Come hang out with How to Run a Live Broadcast Talk Show 101. You can actually go over to talkshow.kmrobinson.com, which I apparently took off of my list of words for the screen. Talkshow.kmrobinson.com, not KM Robinson Books, kmrobinson.com. We're breaking down exactly how to do what we're doing live on Air for Young Adults Edition right now. Um, within this, I show you how to live broadcast, how to get guests, how to talk to them, and all the fun, fabulous things. So check it out, talkshow.kmrobinson.com. And we also just opened up, and this, this is top secret, guys. We opened up a brand new YouTube for authors and book lovers. So it's BookTube Mastermind Group that we would love to invite you to. Uh, for September through December, we're going to be working together to build up our YouTube pages and you can actually join us. Uh, if you would like information on that, send me a DM. I'll get you guys connected with it so that you can come do videos with us and grow your YouTube channel in the BookTube world. Details on that if you DM me, but it's top secret. Big things are coming. We cannot wait to see you again next week. Uh, make sure you tune in, facebook.com slash kmrobinsonbook every Monday. 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. We will see you again next week for our retellings research episode. Until then, you guys have a great day and stay inspired. Bye-bye.